Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about film noir, so if you don't mind, I think I'll change the setting a bit. That's better. The film noir, which came into being at the tail end of World War II, was a cinematic descent into a morally gray area dominated by tough guys, crooks, dangerous women, and world-weary anti-heroes. Far from being uplifting and glamorous, these films pushed the limits of the Hays Code and dealt primarily in deception and murder. In a film noir, the hero and the villain could have an awful lot in common, and evil deeds could go unpunished, at least to all outside appearances. In full disclosure, I confess film noir is not my favorite genre. Sometimes the storylines or the characters just aren't what I'm in the mood for. But I like suspense, I like conflicted characters, and I like the black and white style. I like the lines, the shadows, the angles, the disorientation. There are a lot of movies in the noir genre, and I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen quite a few. So here are my five picks, a couple personal favorites, and a few indispensable classics. My first pick is one of my favorite movies in general, The Third Man from 1949. The wonderful Joseph Cotton stars as American writer Holly Martins, who's been called to Vienna by an old friend, Harry Lyme, offering a job. But when he gets there, he finds Harry Lyme is dead, killed under mysterious circumstances. Martins has questions that neither the British police nor Harry's girlfriend will help him answer, leading him to wonder just what Harry Lyme was up to in Vienna. It's my intention to do a full review of The Third Man in the future, so I won't go on about it too much here, except to say that I love every aspect of this movie. The script, the scenery, the photography, Carol Reed's direction, the famously upbeat and quirky Zither soundtrack. Joseph Cotton, one of my favorite actors, is brilliant and well supported by a melancholy Alita Valley and an ultra-British, very dry Trevor Howard. But the show is undoubtedly stolen by Orson Welles. His entrance is one of the best scenes ever, and this is one of his best performances. He's not in the movie much, but he's unforgettable. My second pick is not a film I love, but it's so quintessentially noir I have to include it. 1944's Double Indemnity. Fred McMurray plays Walter Neff, an insurance agent who gets mixed up with a woman who wants to kill her husband and file a false insurance claim on him. The woman is Phyllis Dietrichson, played by Barbara Stanwyck pulling off one of the baddest femme fatales in film noir history. Whether you find her hairstyle distracting or not, she's hot stuff, and she wraps Neff around her finger. Balancing out the lead characters is Barton Keyes, Neff's friend and a clever claims inspector who starts to believe there's something fishy about the Dietrichson case. Keyes is played by Edward G. Robinson, who's another one of my favorites. Since he played more than his share of disreputable characters, it's nice to see him play the good guy in a film noir, and he makes the movie for me. My third pick is a two-for-one special, because I couldn't make the decision between 1946's The Big Sleep and 1944's Murder My Sweet. Both movies are based on Raymond Chandler's books about private detective Philip Marlowe. The Big Sleep is notorious for its complicated plot. It starts off with Marlowe being hired by a rich family to deal with a blackmail case, and then, well, even the screenwriters admitted that at a certain point, they got lost. So maybe it's a movie whose parts are greater than the whole. Humphrey Bogart plays Philip Marlowe, and he's in classic form, especially when acting opposite Lauren Bacall. There's some signature bogey and Bacall chemistry here, with a lot of flirting and innuendo, Murder My Sweet is a little lighter than The Big Sleep. It doesn't sizzle quite as much, but it's more coherent even as it takes its own bizarre twists and turns. Dick Powell stars as Private Eye Philip Marlowe in what turned out to be a brilliant career move. Powell had previously been known as a smiling song and dance man in many a Busby Berkeley musical in the 30s. Nobody expected to see him as the skeptical, hard-boiled city detective, but he pulled it off with so much success, it reinvigorated his career. Murder, My Sweet is based on Chandler's book titled Farewell, My Lovely, which happens to be the only Marlowe book I've read. I liked it. Marlowe's narrative style reminded me of a slightly more caustic Archie Goodwin, and I think Powell does an excellent job capturing that sarcastic, unapologetically flippant persona. The movie also has excellent performances from its female leads. 
One is noir regular Claire Trevor, who never disappoints, and the other, in a second piece of unexpected casting, is Anne Shirley. This was her last movie before her early retirement. Nice to go out on a high note. My fourth pick is 1944's Lara. I did a review of Lara a few months ago, so again, I won't go into a lot of detail here. It's a murder mystery in which a homicide detective is called in to investigate the death of Lara Hunt, a beautiful socialite and entrepreneur. The detective starts to get lost in the legend of Lara, even falling in love with her even though she's dead, and then he stumbles on a number of twists, none of which I'll spoil for you. This movie has a great cast. Dana Andrews, Jean Tierney, Clifton Webb, Vincent Price, Judith Anderson. The theme music is lovely and mysterious, and the movie has an alluring style and a good story that broadens its appeal. So even if you're not a fan of the average film noir, I think you might enjoy this one. And my last pick is 1958's Touch of Evil. This is a dark, disturbing movie about murder, drugs, corruption, kidnapping, fun things like that. It stars Charlton Heston as a Mexican narcotics officer forced to interrupt his honeymoon to investigate a car bombing that's believed to tie in with a drug case he's been working on. But when he finds out the U.S. cop who's involved is planting false evidence, he changes the focus of his investigation, and everything goes downhill from there. The movie has a large cast full of talent. Charlton Heston does a fine job even though, no, he's not Mexican, and yes, he's wearing heavy makeup. Janet Leigh as his new wife has put through some terrifying experiences, and Orson Welles, who also adapted the screenplay and directed, co-stars as bad cop Hank Quinlan. There's an interesting history behind this movie as well. After Wells finished filming, the studio took over, re-editing, reshooting. When Wells saw the preview, he was prompted to write a 58-page memo explaining why what they'd changed didn't work and how they should fix it. But Universal ignored him, which was a mistake. It wasn't until 1998 that the film was restored to a close approximation of Wells' intent, so that what we have now is an absorbing, superbly made noir thriller. It's one of Wells' best directorial endeavors, and the opening scene alone is worth the price of admission. Those are my five film noir picks. There are a lot of others I could have mentioned, big ones like Out of the Past, Gilda, and The Postman Always Rings Twice, and smaller ones like Pick Up on South Street, Phantom Lady, or The Narrow Margin. Like I said, the genre has a lot to offer. So go ahead and share your thoughts, make your own list if you like. I only ask that you please try not to reveal any plot twists so that those who have not seen any of these movies and would like to are free to enjoy them. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.